think I've got a few joining me. Hello, everyone. Good evening, Nicola. How are you? I'm very well. Hello, Dawn. How are you? How's your little pop? It's a long time since I've gone live. This is very strange. <laughs> Hi, Liz. How are you? Welcome. It's a long time since I've gone live. It's very strange. I couldn't even remember where the button was. Hello, Miep. Hello there. I hope everybody's well. I've actually got my fan on, so I hope you can't hear it too loud. Good evening, Patricia. How are you? Are you all relaxed after your breakaway? Hello, Evelyn. Pop Jack doing well. Is he keeping you busy? <laughs> Time no speak. Hello, Mimi. Hello there. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Hi, Jane. Hello, lovely. Are you all right? I hope everybody's well. It's just a little sort of, you know, off the cuff live. I just thought I'd come and say hello, touch base with everybody. Are you? Hope everybody's well. Are you enjoying this warm weather? She says as she's got her fan on already. Good evening, Lorraine. Hello there. I hope you're well. So I thought it was just a good time just to touch base, say hello to everybody and maybe do a little video. Hello, honey. Hello there. Really busy, but training going well. Oh, don't get me on training the dogs. I'm hopeless. My dogs are the worst trained dogs, which is my fault. I'm looking forward to watching this. Oh, bless. It's a nice, simple demo. Nothing complicated, because I have to sort of break myself in simply. <laughs> so simple's the way to go for me. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Let's just move that. moments just to give people time to see me i mean it's sort of a last minute is it hot and crewy <laughs> crewy <laughs> oh that's abs isn't it crewy yes it's warm alison but then if it goes past 70 i'm always too hot anyway and with being on the menopause i'm always hot hello candice hello there lovely to see you i'm always hot i didn't used to be until i reached a certain age i was always cold but I've reached that age where you only have to blow on me and I'm, I'm boiling. So I'm terrible in the hot weather. So I hope you can't hear the fan buzzing too much and it's not driving you mad. What does he say, Kriwi? I can't even pronounce it now. Hello, Jennifer. Hello there. Warm welcome. I hope you're all well. So it's just a literally just an off the cuff. Soya milk. Oh, I can't drink that, Dawn. It upsets my bowel. <laughs> Sorry to be personal. Because <laughs> I've got IBS. Oh, lovely to have you here, Lynn. Welcome. Does this bring back memories, Liz? <laughs> Covid. Three years ago. Crikey. It was three years ago, wasn't it? Because I started the Covid live videos as soon as Covid started. I think it was the week later. So I started in March of 2020. Can you believe that? It's just a, hopefully a long distance memory. It helps with my other thing. <laughs> Hello, Tracy. How are you? Um, I've only been on the live already and I'm talking about my bowel. I've been on here five minutes. Terrible. Hello, Lucy. Hello, lovely. How are you? Just an off the cuff live, Lucy, just to say hello, touch base, waffle a little bit talk about nonsense and maybe do a little demo as well well i am going to do a little demo because i did a little bit of prep it was quick prep and while i was prepping i thought i may as well go live so that's what decided me to go live so i'm actually going to create a card with one of my new stencils stencil 162 undergrowth but you could actually use any stencil with an open it took you about three seconds as well dawn <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. <laughs> Same culprit. <laughs> Hello there, Liz. <laughs> yep, you kept us all normal in coat. That seems like a lifetime ago, Liz. And that's how I found you. Covid. Nicola, I can't believe that. I feel it's so strange. I felt like I knew you before Covid. 
How weird. I actually met quite a few people through COVID, well, virtually anyway. So I have a lot, in some ways, I have a lot to thank COVID for, really, because there's a lot of people I actually connected with through COVID, but it just seems like in the long distant past now, even though I've had COVID twice, considering I, I never went anywhere, I never had COVID. Hello, Jill. How are you? So, yes, typical. Good evening, Kay, the queen of Facebook lives at the moment. It's lovely to have you here, Lucy. Lovely to hear my droney voice. Hey, you're Blindy. Been, what was that? It's been warmish here today after 3 p.m., but blimey, there is a jaggy wind. A jaggy wind? What's a jaggy wind? And lots of cloud here in Perth. Loving the new release. Need some stencils, but holding back for a bit. Oh, bless you, Linda. It's actually been really warm here, Linda. We've had a bit of a breeze, but quite warm. But I've never heard of a jaggy wind. J jaggy wind. Does that mean it's like a, a bit of a, a cool wind? <laughs> I learn something new every time. <laughs> What's happening there? Oh, I hope this isn't going to start doing silly things now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little demo with one of my new stencils, with stencil 162, and it's called Undergrowth. I normally do on my ever-growing Doncaster... Oh, these are stencils are on my growing Doncaster list. Is, is Abs at Doncaster? I don't know whether Abs is at Doncaster, Candice, or is he? I don't know. My bank manager would like to meet <laughs> Might have a few words to say to me, Kay. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get stuck in to my demo and just enjoy sort of half an hour with you chatting away while I create a little project. And it's only going to be something very simple. And sometimes when I'm... That sounds scary, Kay. <laughs> Jaggy wind. Oh, oh no, our wind hasn't been like that. Oh, have you double-checked, Candice? Well, Candice, you know more than I do. Don't rely on me for any information. I'm useless. There you go, Candice. What do I know? What a drip. I know nothing. So sometimes when we're creating, we get it has to be this or it has to be that or it has to have so many techniques. I always think that if you're creating, as long as you're enjoying it, it doesn't matter what it is. Hello, Jane. How, hello there. How are you, Jane? So, for me, it's an excuse just to create. Hello, Anne. Hello there. It's so lovely to touch base with you all again, just to see how you all are. I'm a bit rusty, as you will see. I've done a, a video on YouTube, and I posted that today. Uh, today, I did post that today, didn't I? Yes, I did. And that was with inks and distress oxide inks and things like that. So, that's on YouTube now. So, I thought I'd create with paints. Good morning, Kay. Good morning. My list of all the create stuff I've got is a lot shorter than I have not got. <laughs> oh, bless you, Kay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I'm going to just create something simple that anybody could create and that anybody could just... You could do it with your inks, but I'm going to do it with paint because I want it quite vibrant. Hello, Ria. Hello there. Hello, Maria. And as you know, with my Facebook Lives, because for me, if I do go live, it's my way to touch base with you all and just to say hello. So that's my excuse anyway. So that's why I say hello to everybody. So what I'm going to do is start with some paints. And I've got some of the um, Dina Wakely neon paints. But you can use absolutely that my network is saying. Trying to connect. I hope it isn't going to play silly buggers. So... I'm going to use some of the new ones and some of the older paints, but you could use absolutely any paints. And I'm using my cut and dry foam that I use for my inks. Again, you could use sponges. Hello, Penny. Hello there. Oops, that was the wrong way round. <laughs> so I could use, you can use sponges. You can cut bits of makeup sponges up, whatever you've got. I'm just using cut and dry foam. Oh, your favourite colour. Thanks, Kay. I am a green. I do like green, I must admit. It must be the fact that I've got red hair. I think that's what it is. I tend to favour green. So the first colour that I'm going to use is Gnarly. 
So I'm going to use that. And I'm literally going to, if I bring this down here, move these out of the way a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to add a little bit of paint. Now, the thing that you need to remember is not to use too much paint. Three seconds and I have the paint on my fingers. That took three seconds. So I've got a piece of cut and dry foam for each colour because I can just wash this out and use it back for my inks again. So I'm going to take the gnarly, which is a yellow colour. So you can use the lemon or gnarly if you've got gnarly like me or any yellow paint that you've got. And what I'm going to do is a very, a very professional technique here, as you can see. It's called splodging it on your card. And as you can see, it's really technical. And what I like to do is I like to do simple techniques that are easy to achieve that everybody can accomplish. And what I want you to do is when you dab it, dab it until it's almost dry. So that's your first colour. So I'm then going to use lime. And what the aim of this is, is that you're layering the colours. And you're using a little bit of paint because you're layering rather than blending. So I'm taking the cut and dry foam and I'm working the paint in to the cut and dry foam so that I almost blend it, work it into the foam so that I don't have any blotches of, of paint. And then again, very professional technique. You're just going to splodge it on there. You're not going, you don't have to think about it too much because you're using such little paint. They're not blending and merging together, making other colours. So I don't have to worry about that too professional, very good looking knot. So I'm just going to wipe that so that I don't, I work with the paints clean. And what I mean by that is I work with them clean so that they're on my craft sheet and they're not working with any other colour. That's all I mean by working with them clean. So I've used gnarly, I've used lime, which is a yellow and a green, and now I'm going to use turquoise. And you can see with the demo, I'm using very little paint. I'm using a little blob. Can you see that? Yes, you can. I'm using a tiny little blob and I'm going to work that paint in to the cut and dry foam because you don't want blobs of the paint. You're working with almost and then you're just going to layer this and what I want you to do is be a little bit carefree don't be too strict on yourself you know don't panic oh you know this looks a total mess because let's be honest at this stage it looks a total mess that doesn't matter don't panic about it too much but again just so that I don't blend any colors I'm just going to wipe a little bit of the dry paint up and I bet you can hear the birds singing, can't you? Because I've got the window open. Now what I'm going to use is fuchsia. Now fuchsia is a very dark colour and it's got some purple tones in, a little bit like the bodacious, whichever that one is, that's a new colour. And because it's got that in, I'm going to work with a very small amount because if I was working and blending colours, I wouldn't want to blend this colour with an orange because you just end up with creating mud. So what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of that colour here and there. What kind of paper do you use? Hi Evelyn, I'm actually using Pink Frog Super Smooth card, which is not a watercolour card. It's just a good quality smooth card that can take your mediums. And it means that I can stamp on it as well if I wished. But for this demo, I'm so what I'm doing is I'm just adding, and as you can see, again, nothing professional. And I'm almost dabbing until the paint is almost dry. I'm sort of dabbing off as if I was dabbing off the excess. I'm then going to go to Bodacious. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Bodacious, Bodacious. Oh, I liked that. I liked that before you put that on. Hang on. You, you just don't look at it yet. Don't look at this and say, oh, I like it then. I like it. Well, what you can do is if you liked it at the beginning stage, create that bang background and then come back to creating this. There are stages. There is always stages where it looks a mess. But the idea is, is you stay with it. You don't panic. 
So I'm going to use the Bodacious. Now, if there's a stage where you think, oh, I like it as it is, then keep that and then start again and do this one. So I'm using the Bodacious and I'm taking a little bit of the paint and working it in to my cut and dry foam. And then I'm going to go over with some of that. That is a little bit too little paint, so I need, it's, it's important that you use less, less is more, because you can't put your paint back into your container. You want to be able to use what you've got on your cut and dry foam. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm just blending some of this color. Now don't sit there with your hands in your head going, oh my goodness, what is she doing? Don't panic. Have faith. You're very welcome, Evelyn. You carry on with the questions. You can ask as many questions as you like. No problem at all. That's what I'm here for. Which is stoked. It's called stoked. A couple of new colours from Diane. Wrong name. Dina Wakely. So I'm just, again, working that in to my cut and dry foam. And what I always like to do when I'm doing a demo, I never like to rush what I'm doing. Even if I say, oh, this is going to be a quick demo, I don't like to rush any of the processes. Now, if you get to a stage and you think, yes, I quite like this colour, you know, say you've got a favourite colour, then add more of that colour that's your favourite, fall in love with it. Because the colour that you class as your favourite colour will become more prominent and be more pleasing to your eye. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of the pink. So you just have to stick with it. But the idea is that when you're creating this project, you're not stressed, you're enjoying it. And you're just enjoying the process of just layering those paints. Now, anybody, absolutely anybody, beginners, anybody, can create this. I'm doing nothing that nobody else can create. So I've then got my pink on there. And what you're doing now is you'll start to, it will start to change eventually. What I've then got is an orange. Now I always again like to be a bit careful with my orange. Radical, nice name for a paint, Radical. And I'm just going to work that in with the orange paint. And I'm going to keep the orange sort of near the pink. Hello, Susan, hello there, how are you, lovely? So I'm going to keep the orange near the pinks and the blues and greens. I'm not going to sort of touch the purpley colors. Not that it matters on this occasion because I'm not blending the inks, I'm layering. Now, what I'm going to do now is work more with it. So, what I'm going to do then is go back to my gnarly colour, which is yellow. And I'm then going to work more of the yellow in. All well, and thank you. Thank you for ordering. I didn't know when the release was going to the stockist, but I found out today, so I'm, I'm really pleased. So, what I'm doing is I've got the gnarly colour. And what you're doing now is you're layering more of the colours. And it starts to look totally different as you layer more of the colour. So I'm adding, and what you'll also notice with your colours, what you will also notice is there are certain colours that give you vibrancy. For instance, the yellow gives you vibrancy to your design. And it makes your project look gnarly. And I'm then going to take some of my turquoise. And the reason I'm going to add turquoise is the turquoise works really well. Oh, honestly, Jennifer, I cannot get anybody's names right. On, I always said, when, when I used to speak to my mum, I used to say, why do you keep getting people's names mixed up? I, I've never done that. And now I'm 50 something. Ask me how many people's names I get mixed up. Oh, I am terrible. Guys, new paint colours, gonna have to have them. Do you know how many? Oh, hang on, I think there are about six or seven. Actually, um, Susan's on, and Susan might have the new colours. Hello, Marianne. 
Hello there. Now, the turquoise, this is why it's good to experiment with your colours. I know that the turquoise works beautifully with that sort of fuchsia colour. I know that it sort of works with it and tones it down and works beautifully with that colour to add the turquoise because the turquoise works with so many other colours. And what you'll start to notice is the colours start to sort of blend and merge a lot better. So the idea is you don't give up on this yet. You don't give up. And what you do is as you're looking at your composition, you start then looking. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the pink. And I'm keeping the pink away from that blue on my non-stick craft sheet. Six to seven, I thought there were six to seven new colours, I must admit. So I'm just adding a little bit more of that pink. Just a little bit more. And then I'm going to go back to the yellow again. Because the yellow um, sort of... But none of this is going to matter. I'm liking it again. <laughs> I promise you it always turns out well in the end and if you use the yellow it really lifts the whole design what you have to do is have a little bit of patience okay and that is where we're going to leave the background we're going to leave it just like that because it's not going to matter because it, it's not going to finish up looking like that at all so what I'm going to do then is use my stencil. So I'm using the undergrowth stencil. And what I want to show you with this card is that you don't always have to have stamps. You can sometimes just use stencils as well. So what I'm going to do is decide where my stencil is going to go. And I think I'm going to aim for sort of there. One layer from perfection. Well, it might not be perfect, but it's a one layer from definitely from Betty. <laughs> Our money feel for it. Um, yes, you know, and if you do this background and then pick out one of the predominant colours that you've got in your background and you can then add a floral in the foreground and colour your floral with one of the predominant colours from low tack tape just here as a hinge. And I've got my stencil on here. I'm then going to use Tim Holtz Distress Texture Paste Translucent. So I'm just going to move all my paints out of the way. I'll mention those colours one more time, just in case we went a little too quick. For the yellow, I used Lime for the green, Turquoise for the blue, a touch of Fuchsia, a touch of bodacious, a touch and a, quite a bit of stoked, I'm just chucking them all over the place, and a touch of radical. Uh, they're lovely bright colours, so let's move the, the cut and dry foam. I'm going to use the Distress Texture Paste Translucent, and I'm going to use my palette knife. I'm going to take a good dollop, professional term, and I'm just going to apply that over my stencil. Just some good dollops just over. I tend to use a lot more than I need because I can scrape it back up afterwards. So I'm just adding a good dollop of the texture paste just so that I cover the areas that I want. Now I tend not to try and scrape too much because I don't want to stencil. I can easily scrape it off afterwards. Good evening, Jane. So I can easily scrape that off afterwards. But I'm going to keep that and then I can create another background. So we'll just move the texture paste on one side and I'll just clean my palette knife. And you'll start to see this is why your background doesn't make any difference. And you don't have to panic too much. So what I'm going to do is just lift up this little hinge and then I can see exactly what I've got so at the moment I've got this just so 
And let's just move this on one side at the moment because we can create another background and I'll lift that up for you afterwards. So let's just remove this. So let's just grab another piece of card. So if I grab another piece of card, let's just wipe up this. You can scrape that back into your pot. I can't because there's colours on my non-stick craft sheet. So what you can do then is take your stencil and then just place your stencil onto your blank piece of card so you've got another piece of card the remainder of the texture paste the translucent texture paste I can just rub that over my stencil now don't rub it too hard because you don't want to take the skin off your finger but just grab every bit of texture paste that you've got on your stencil and just blend it across your page and then you so if I just lift this up, you can see, she says, hopefully, there is an impression on there of the stencil. So then I can create another background at a later date. So that just gives me another, another background. Right, let's just move that on one side and let's just give this stencil a little bit of a wipe. I know I need that one. So that just gives you another background that you can then spritz with sprays and the texture paste will resist that. So you could add some of your sprays over the backgrounds that you've made of a second generation print. Even the fact that I'm white to a piece of white card as well and you still might get another sort of print off there. So it's always worthwhile just creating extra. Let's move these out of the way right so what i'm going to do say that you've gone under your stencil a little bit in a couple of areas just remove a little bit of that but let me just bring this up just so that you can see where you've got your texture paste just so you can see you've got your texture paste and then when that's dry you've then got this So you add your translucent texture paste and when it's dry, you have this. Okay, so we'll place that on there because it doesn't take very long to dry. And then this is why it doesn't matter what your background looks like because you're then going to take Distress Ink Black Soot. You're going to blend the black soot on your cut and dry foam and you're then going to go over the whole project with black soot so you're just going to go over that with black soot and I want you to blend it really well thank you Anne I want you to blend that really well I don't want you to scrimp on the blending Give it a really good blend, a good layer, because you want a nice, deep, rich black. And can you see, I'm trying to keep my hands away from the black. You can easily use a piece of kitchen roll just to keep your hands away from that. And just a really good blend, just with the black. Just blend... And then we'll just clean up our mess. I always clean up any time I use black because I find that you can get in such a mess. And then what I'm going to do is just take my spritzer bottle. Spritz my kitchen roll. Hello Shelly, spritz my kitchen roll with water. And just... What you need to do is ink. So keep layering. Because when you've just applied it, obviously the black ink, distress ink, is reactive 
to the moisture. So what happens is the actual stenciled areas where you've used the then resists the ink. So just dab away. And then what we're going to do is use our oxide and we'll explain why. So just, there's just another thing I need to explain. Right. So as you can see with the distress ink, I can remove it. However, if I use, let me see, why didn't I get it out in the first place? Let me just find my, or find, you can tell it was off the cuff. Let's try the other one. Right, there's something I just want to explain. Right, so you've got the colours there and I use the black soot distress ink. Okay, now if I use the black soot distress so leave that bit there and do this bit. Because this has got a pigment to it, so it's got an opaque element. So it's got an opaque element. So when you rub it away, more of the oxide, the outside edges. So you'll find that the oxide, because of the pigment in there, that stays on better than the distress ink. I think it's just important that you realize that, you know, some products they work in different ways, but because that's got that um, pigment dye fusion on there, you've got that opaque quality. And it doesn't remove as easily. So therefore it stays blacker. Let me just... So you spend a little bit of time cleaning and then going round just to... There are also other ways that you can you can do the technique. So you can continue layering up like so. Let's just move this. Oh, I've now got the stencil stuck to me. Let's just move this. Just trying to do it so that it's inclusive for everybody. Now, if you've got paste around your leaf obviously that will resist the um ink as well so i'm just cleaning up my little birds just so that they just look nice on the background and i'm uh, this is a dry wipe it's not wet so i'm just cleaning up of that there we go and you can use my heart stencil in exactly the same way. That could be used just in exactly the same way. Now, if you haven't got a distress oxide, you can then, if you want, you can colour around your design and just colour around with your Posca pen. Obviously, that's going to be a lot more long-winded if you, if you go around with that. But... Because of the colours, it doesn't matter what colours you did in the background. The colours just show through. I... <laughs> That's the thing. I have to have the window open. Um, I can't help myself. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now... What I'm going to do now is just flick my heat gun on and just give that a little bit of a dry because I've used a pigment 
dye fusion. So because I've got that pigment element in there, I need to make sure that that's dry. And then if you've, you can go over it with your Posca pen if you want, but I like the effect of that anyway. So I'm going to add a sentiment and I'm going to add... I know I'll, <laughs> I have to have the window open, Shelley, but they're lovely to hear. So I'm just going to add some splatters and I'm just going to hold my pen right at the end because it just makes those splatters a little easier to do. If I hold the pen right at the end and it just brings a little bit of brightness to that design. So let's just clean our hands. That's totally dry. But it's a nice simple technique with your stencils that you can use and you can use it with any open design that you have. So you could use the hearts. So any anything that's got sort of a really good of course when you're trying to find it you can't find it anything that's got a really good open design will work really well doing that background oh yeah super thick slap it on absolutely fine um and as long as it resists the ink but you can do it with any open any open open design that you wish but the hearts would work quite well because they've got... And also what you can do is, on your background, then add some text to your background. So I'm now going to grab a piece of white card. And don't worry if, when you've added the black, you've got bits that are not completely covered with the black. That adds to the whole background feel. I'm then going to use my power of the word stamp set, one of the sentiments. And I think I'm going to do live each moment. I think that's quite nice. So we'll use my black uh, Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. And just, now I haven't added this to an acrylic block. I'm just going to wing it without the acrylic block. I like the fact I've got a few sentiments there that I can use. But it's lovely just to do something that, you know, you're not sort of stressing over, you know, and, and even when you look at the background, you panic a little bit. But then when you finish it off, it's, it's not what it seems. It's, you know, it, it turns out a lot better than you expected. But as I say, you don't have to have the ink pads. You can use a Posca pen and if, if you know, if you love colouring, you can just colour around the images with a black Posca pen or permanent marker, whatever you've got. You can just use that. There you go. So I'm just cutting out the sentiment. Like you say, it's, it's lovely. So I can just have live in the moment here. And what I'm going to do, if you're cutting, say you you cut out and you're not brilliant at cutting out, I'm just going to go round with my Posca pen because that will reiterate the black line. None of us are super perfect at cutting out. But if that's, you know, a thing that bothers you, just go around with your Posca pen and then that'll just neaten the edges up like meant to be like that. Give that a few seconds before you do anything. Right. And what I can do is. So just give that a few seconds to dry so I can add live in the moment. You could put it here. I don't want to cover too much of the bird up. But what I'm going to do is. I'm just going to add one of the little birds cut out. So what I'm going to do, just to add to the design, I'm just going to use my little quill ends, little bird here, just to add him to the design, because I think he'll work quite nicely and knit together. So I hope that was easy enough to follow. 
And if you've got any questions, please feel free. But if you've got something, if you're colouring around the outside, if you've got something permanent that you're just colouring around the outside, obviously that'll stay permanent and you won't have to wipe it off the coloured area if you use a pen. I wiped it off because obviously I used the ink. But if you were colouring round it or painting around the leaves, then you wouldn't have to wipe it off the area. So that's just, but that background that then looked, you know, that you thought, what on earth is she doing? Looks totally different when you've got those, that stencil used. And as per normal, in about 150 things all over my desk from one small demo. So I'm just going to cut this out and just leave a little white border. Now, if you're a professional and you're a professional demonstrator, you've got all this cut out and pre-done. I decided to do the Facebook Live just off the cuff, just last minute. I was sitting here and thought, why not? And therefore, I haven't got anything cut out. Are those sentiments still? They are, Uni, yes. It's stamp set, stamp set 754, power of the word. You should be able to get them from your stockists. And there's a list of stockists also on the All and Create website. So I'm just going to cut my little beard out. And what this white will do is just give me some contrast against the colourful background and at the moment I'm cutting the pen nib out. pen nib thanks Lynn you're very welcome so I'm then going to add my little bird just here just to give me some contrast of the white against the colour and often, if you don't know whether you're happy with something, look at it through a camera lens. Because if you look at it through a camera lens, it looks completely different, honestly. And it'll give you a different view, a different feel for your project. What I'm also going to do is add a touch of white cotton. Now, it's going to be added to a white card, even though I'm going to add it to a black mat as well. So let's just add a little touch of cotton just going to spread that out a little bit just so we've got some of that cotton finger and I end up with it everywhere and sometimes it's lovely to do something just simple just off the cuff because of no reason you don't have to have a reason to create just be I love that live each moment isn't that the truth so just add that and I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive just behind my little bird, just some 3D. You can use ultra thick gel medium or your pin flare mounts, whichever you like to do. I'm just adding this here. like so and then it just diffuses your background a little bit but just adds little detail to your project now what I'm going to do is just add my Posca pen because I'm going to mat and layer it so because I'm going to mat and layer it I like to mat it onto a piece of black card before I mat it onto my white card. So what I'm going to do is just use my Posca pen just to give a little touch of white just round the outer edge of the card. It's going to be very subtle, but it's just so I can... So I've just added a little, little inkling of white just around the outer edge just around the outer edge just so that it when I mat it onto the black it looks like there is a mat there so I'm just going to add this to a black mat before I add it to a white card and when you add it to the white card I always think that shows off 
the card in better light when it's it's matted and layered. I'm just going to take a few moments just to layer that up. I sort of get one edge in place first before. Just remember when you're adding your background colour, just make sure that it's dry. And then I'm going to make sure my hands are clean, which they're not, before we mat and lay it onto that white card. So we'll just give my hands a little bit of a clean. And then we'll add that to a six by six inch card blank. I do apologize, I don't think I mentioned the size of the card. The size of the card that I actually worked on was... Thanks very much, Evelyn, thank you. Thank you for joining us. So I'm just going to add that then to the white card blank. Just make sure it's facing the right way. And I've, the card blank is a little bit bigger. The mat is of a quarter of an inch bigger, but the card is a little bit bigger. So the card black mat is a quarter of an inch bigger. And then I've got it on a six by six inch card blank. But I think when you add it to the white card blank, it echoes the white here that I've used. And that means that when you looked at your messy background, which you started with here, you started with this. Which, like Anne said, you could have just used the background as it was, but then you've ended up with that. Oh, thank you, Anne. You've then ended up with this just from adding a little bit of colour very randomly. It looks completely different once it's dry. Now what you could do, if you do two of them, thanks Shelley, if you do two of them, like I've done, Camry, if you've done two like I've done, then why not try and go round in a different colour? Why not, instead of going round in black, why don't you, thanks Patricia, why not give it a go and go round in a blue and see what it looks like? Because it doesn't matter if you waste it. It's not a problem. It's a piece of card. But you could go round that one with blue to see what difference it makes and how it changes it. Oh, bless you. Thanks, Alison. Oh, bless you. You don't have to feel lonely. You can always message us. So that, I hope you enjoyed. Just a quick off-the-cuff demo. Just because I felt like it really for no other reason and just to just to touch base with you. And rough the same. <laughs> Bless you, Uni. So yes, so it means that your backgrounds then you don't have to worry about. You just get a beautiful result result without worrying about your background. Because the background looks nothing on earth when you do it. Yes, you have a lovely evening too, Anne. You have a lovely evening too. And thanks for joining me. Thanks, Hanny. Thank you. So I will, you know, try and continue, Jane. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for joining me. And thanks, Shelley. It's so great to see how you develop an idea, Tristan. Oh, you're very welcome, Jane. You're very welcome. It's lovely to be here. If any of you can share the video, that would be much appreciated, just so that those ladies that weren't able to join, because obviously it was a last minute thing, can then, you know, see the demo. So thanks very much, everybody. I'm just going to hang a few moments, just in case anybody's got any questions. I doubt it, but just in case anybody's got any questions. Thanks, Dawn. Thanks, Ria. You're very welcome. I hope you all have a good week. You've all got a good week planned. Hey, and I only, I only, I managed to go in under the hour. Can't be bad. I must be getting better. Actually, under the hour. So, thanks very much, everybody, for joining me. And I will go live again soon. You wouldn't have known, Lee, because I was actually very off the cuff and it was very last minute. Oh, hi, Fran. Bless you. Thank you, Flower. I hope you well, Fran. So you wouldn't have known, Lee. It was very off the cuff. You're very welcome. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Is that a technique? It could be, Linda. I've just done it for many years, probably about 25 years. But it might be. I don't know. 
Uh, yes, it could be. Yes, it could be. So thanks for having me. Love to all. And if you've got any questions or you think of any in the meantime, you can just leave them below the video and I'll see those. So love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Bye.